Have you ever heard of resurrection science? Depending on what you're reading, it may refer to one of two things. Either the bringing to life of bacteria or viruses that are still viable and found in permafrost, which there are reasonable concerns about. Or it might be referring to something more like Jurassic Park. When I was a kid, I was really, really excited for this. And as an adult and a scientist myself, I do realize some of the holes, but there's been some success. Like our friends the quagga, a now extinct species of plains zebra. We brought them back by selectively breeding regular zebras and bringing back in this orange color variant. Are they exactly the same? No. But we did right one of our wrongs as the human species. And I, I just, I love them. It is quite a bit more complicated when we're trying to bring things back, like the dodo bird. We don't have a lot of decent samples of the dodo. A lot of these were preserved before we humans got a good idea of how to effectively preserve samples, and they just ended up degrading over time. DNA is pretty sturdy. It can survive for up to 30 years in soil, but it gets difficult if you really want to extract it and bring it back as a clone. Efforts have involved taking their closest cousin, which is a kind of pigeon, and genetically engineering them to have the genes that are found in some of the samples of the dodo bird. Yes, they really are beautiful. There are several problems with trying to do this. These guys are very, very distant from dodo birds. Taking these genes, we may end up having unexpected results in a non-functional organism. Even if we were successful, we really don't have a place for them to live. They would ultimately have to live in a zoo. It would be a Jurassic Park kind of situation. The ecosystem on Earth is kind of out of balance, and we are rapidly losing territory that animals could live in. Even if we were to bring back things like the woolly mammoth, which we'll get to, I don't think there would be anywhere for it to live. When we're talking about resurrecting species, we're talking about trying to replicate their natural reproductive environment. Now with our friends the woolly mammoth, we are in luck. There's a lot of really well-preserved samples that we've gotten from the Arctic. That means we do have the entire genome. If we only have parts of the genome in piecemeal, we have to essentially assemble it and fill in the gaps, the necessary genes for life. However, if we have the complete genome, we don't have to worry about that quite so much. There may still be repair that needs to be done before you could successfully clone it. And yes, somebody did incorporate mammoth genetics and created a meatball. Would I eat it? Absolutely. However, there are several major problems with that. We would have to find a suitable host to incubate it. That would probably end up being an elephant, although we don't know how their immune systems would react to an entirely different species. We also may not have the exact same incubation period nor dosage of hormones during the pregnancy. Now let's assume we got all of that right, and we had the birth of a woolly mammoth. Where would it live? Elephants are already not doing super well, and the environment that a woolly mammoth lived in no longer exists. It may not just be extraordinarily expensive and nearly impossible to clone one, it's also probably unethical. Similar problems exist with trying to bring back the extinct Tasmanian tiger. We may have their entire genome, and we may even have intact cells, but it is a monumental effort to clone them successfully, even in artificial wombs. But there is the big problem of having enough genetic diversity in order to establish a real population, even if we overcame all of that. Which bums me out. I do want Jurassic Park, but I realized there might be serious problems in getting there.